Thanks so much for being here. My name is Lisa Gervrod. I'm with FLIR with our OEM products group. And I'm very excited to be here today. I'm going to talk to you about some innovations in sensor positioning. In our industry, it seems like so many components just keep getting smaller. At FLIR, we definitely see this. Um, our lepton thermal camera core is super tiny. If you haven't seen it, it's about 10 millimeters square. Um, we just shipped our millionth one this week, which is amazing. Um, on the machine vision side, we've got our Blackfly camera, which is made by our new IIS team up in Canada. That's formerly Point Grey. That's also nice and tiny. In the world of pan tilt where I live, it's really challenging to make a small unit. You've got gears, you've got motors, you've got electronics, slip rings. It's really hard to package that into something compact. But we, we've heard from a lot of our customers that small is important, so we've, we've really tried hard to do that. Um, and I'm happy to say that we were able to do that without sacrificing accuracy, without sacrificing ruggedness, and um, adding some new really exciting features. So today we're going to go through some of the challenges in sensor positioning. We'll talk about our solution to those problems, and then look at some of the applications that can benefit. So speaking of applications, the image that you're seeing here is um, a really cool aircraft uh, monitoring system. It's actually a remote air traffic control system that was designed by Saab in Sweden. And on the top of the tower there, you'll see two pan tilts. Um, those are being used to look at the runway to make sure it's safe to take off and land. Um, they've got signal light guns and, and lots of uh, redundancy in the system to make sure it's really truly safe. So we saw a lot of really cool applications like that in this market. So I'm sure a lot of people here are really familiar with sensors, um, but you may not be on a first name basis with pan tilt units. So um, if I could get a quick show of hands, how many people here have worked with a pan tilt system before? Okay, that's, that's pretty good. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar, um, it's pretty basic. It's a two axis positioning system. Panning is left and right, tilting is up and down. It provides a surface for mounting a camera, sensor, or any other kind of payload, antennas, lasers, um, anything that has a directional uh, requirement to it. It tends to be controlled by computer. We do also see some joystick applications. And the idea is you want to point that payload exactly at the target that you've commanded it to. Um, in this um, video that you just saw here, that's a two-axis system, and it's pointing at the target that's based on GPS coordinates. So you may look at this and say, well, what's so challenging about hand tilt? Those are just motors, right? Can't be that hard. Um, but it turns out there are some challenges that um, when you're designing a system, you want to be aware of and make sure that um, you're going to be able to meet your customer's requirements. Um, so the first one is reliability. So say you're putting a system in a remote area. Um, you don't want to have to go out there to tweak it, to maintain it. You want to make sure that it's going to work right the first time and you're never going to need to go out there. Um, so reliability is, is key. Um, repeatability um, is basically the ability of the system to point to the commanded target and be able to go back there to the same location again and again and again, day after day, week after week, month after month. Um, so we've taken that into account um, when looking at our new product development. So speed, so first of all, positioning speed. Um, say you want to find a target and track it and it's moving really fast. You want to be responsive. You need to be able to, to move quickly. Um, Pass-through data speed refers to Say you have an IP camera, you have multiple sensors, you need to push a lot of data through um, the slip ring of the unit. Um, flexibility and ease of integration is key. If you're designing a system, maybe you don't know exactly how much your camera is going to weigh, you're still designing your housing, you're not sure how big it's going to be. So it's nice to have some flexibility in terms of size, in terms of weight. Um, so we look at that pretty closely. 
Um, you may have seen uh, images from positioners where you see some blur, you might see some jitter. If you're doing video analytics, that can be really tricky. Um, so smooth positioning is really important. And then cost, size, and weight. I'm sure most people here care about at least one of those. Um, the image that you're seeing there is a construction camera. So um, this system builds basically a database of images over time so that you can monitor the progress of a job, look back two months ago, see exactly what was happening at that stage of construction. Um, and that's a megapixel camera that's mounted on our unit there. So our new solution to all those challenges is called the PTU-5. This is a brand new system that we've launched here at SPY. Um, the 5 refers to the payload capacity of 5 pounds. Um, the camera that you're seeing there is one of our machine vision cameras from the Point Grey Group, Clear IIS. Um, that's got a side mounting bracketing option, um, but we offer a lot of flexibility in how you can mount your camera. So it's hard to tell from some of these photos how big the system really is or how big it isn't. That pen in the photo helps to illustrate. It's really quite tiny. Um, you may have seen there's a tracking mount over there. Um, that's awesome and impressive and gigantic. This is on the other side of that spectrum. So it's trying to address really small payloads, um, people who really care about um, portability, about um, possibly covert applications where you want to keep it small. Um, we've tried to keep it rugged, so it's still um, mil-spec A10G for shock and vibe, IP67, so you can use it anywhere, even outdoors. Um, and it's easily integrated with a variety of different sensors. So as we were putting the system together, um, we wanted to keep it small, obviously, um, but we didn't want to take away any features away. So this system has a slip ring, um, so you can pass through up to 11 signals from the, from the sensor down to the base. Um, and a new feature for us is actually an optical encoder on the output. And the reason why that matters is that if you have an encoder on the motors, you can catch big slip events like a gust of wind coming along. Um, but you may not catch compliance in the system. You may not catch things like a little bit of wear in the gears. Um, so adding that encoder allows us to monitor exactly what's going on in the output. So you'll always know exactly where you're pointed. The other thing we did that's new is that we incorporated a belt reducer in addition to gears. So that's kind of a hybrid design. Um, and that's... It was an interesting choice because a lot of people will think about belts and think, well, that's actually possibly a failure point. That's a little scary. But it turns out if you design it right, if you specify it right, it's actually a really reliable component. We've done huge amounts of wear testing on the system, and it's, it's rock solid. Um, the other cool thing about the encoders is that if there is a little bit of compliance from the belts or the gear system, you pick it up, you find it right away, and you, and you make the little adjustments that you need. So it, it offers a lot of um, comfort that you know exactly where you are, even if it's a remote system. So this is a really cool image showing one of our security cameras. Um, so that's about at the five pound load. So this would represent kind of the maximum payload capacity. Um, I mentioned the mil spec. Um, harsh environment capability of this unit. Um, it's IP67, so you can put it anywhere, even out in the rain. And um, it, it's really going to be a nice rugged system, so even for vehicle-mounted applications. I mentioned the encoder, so that gives us repeatability to 0.1 degrees. Um, the pan axis speed is going to be up to 150 degrees per second, which is really key if you're trying to track something, if you want to turn on quickly um, and get to your commanded location. Um, we listened to a lot of customers who said, you know, we really need to turn on and be able to move quickly, so we can't wait for the thing to do a really slow homing dance. So we listened to our customers um, and we designed a system that would start up quickly. You don't have to return to zero, you can home to. Uh, a location that's closer to that. 
Um, the other nice thing, by, by maintaining the, the worm gear design, is that we have high holding torque. When you turn the system off, it doesn't droop down. So um, it, it's going to feel really solid when you, when you use it. I mentioned the, the small size, so it's approximately six inches high. Um, and you don't need an extra controller box. So it makes setting it up really easy. There's just one main cable um, to provide power and comms. The unit itself weighs just under five pounds. And because we don't have the external motor cable, the swept volume is also pretty tiny. So you don't have to worry about a cable getting wrapped up. So when we were designing this, we wanted to make it easy for people to, to jump on and use it quickly. So we made the decision to stick with our existing firmware. So if you're familiar with our other products, you can start running this unit um, really easily. So we just added a few little commands, but all the old code should still work. Um, cabling is really simple. You just need power and communications. Um, the slip ring in the unit gives you up to 11 pass-throughs. And we have multiple bracketing options. If you want to make your own, we'll support that too. We'll, we'll give you the drawings. So why do you care about that? Um, basically, what you want to be able to do is turn on and track moving targets in seconds. This system will do that for you. It's lightweight, uh, mil spec. You can use it in any kind of environment. And you can integrate, integrate it with a wide variety of sensors and cameras. So let's talk about some of the applications that might benefit. Um, so anything that's going to be demanding low cost, repeatable positioning, that's easy to integrate and also small. Um, remote monitoring. So I mentioned the construction camera application. Um, obviously, that's a remote site where you may not be able to get to it easily. Um, we also see this used in um, agricultural applications, mining applications, um, looking for, for issues. Um, video tracking, um, this is especially important for applications that want um, high speed, repeatability. Um, that, could, that could be like a UAV tracking system or maritime. Um, and so in that application, repeatability and speed is, is pretty important. So robotics that can include anything from industrial automation um, to machine vision, law enforcement, vehicle applications, and then unattended ground sensors. So um, in that application, portability can be really important. So um, we'd like to invite you to come check it out. Um, you might have noticed the video earlier. It was moving kind of slow. We've got it moving much faster at our booth. Um, it's number 827. And we've got this new guidebook that talks to, about some of the details and um, exactly what you might need to look at when designing a system. Um, so are there any questions that we can address for you?